Hello, hello! Welcome to another crochet tutorial video. I'm very excited to show you how to make your very own Sunday tank top uh, as featured in the May 2024 issue of Crochet Foundry Magazine. Check out the description box below for how you can get a hold of your own copy of this pattern. This tutorial video is really just supposed to be a support for the written pattern. I'm not going to be walking you through every single step of how to create this. So if you do want to know how to make it, you'll want to make sure that you pick that up and then you can follow along with any of the tips and tricks that I show in this video. So before we get started, one thing we need to do is get some supplies. So as you can see here, we need our yarn, which creates this beautiful uh, fabric right here. You can obviously pick and choose whatever colors you really want, but you're going to need two colors. You're going to need a main color and a contrasting color for the top part. So for my main color, I'm using the uh, Knit Picks and We Crochet Shine Sport Weight in the color cream. And then for my contrasting color, I'm using it in the color Cosmopolitan. This is a perfect yarn for a summer time uh, wear. So if you are, you know, preparing for those hot weather months that are coming up, um, or even if it's the dead of winter and you're just looking forward to some sunshine and want to make something for the warm weather, you can feel free to pick up your own version of these uh, through Crochet, or sorry, We Crochet. Uh, there's a link in the description box there below. If you do substitute, I do recommend that you still stick with something like a cotton or a modal or lyocell or some kind of lightweight plant-based uh, fiber. Um, or if you are somebody who just really likes animal fibers and you still want to use like a wool, I would definitely go with a very lightweight wool, definitely sport weight. The other thing you'll need are some hooks. So the primary hook we are going to be using is going to be a size F, which is a 3.75 millimeter. I am using my Furls Odyssey. Um, at the time of launch, this is no longer going to be a hook that Furls offers, but you can certainly find any of the other um, options that they have. They do go down to a 3.75 millimeter or any hook that you need to achieve the gauge for your main pattern. I also have a second hook here. This is my size D. This is a 3.25 millimeter. It's two sizes smaller than this, but it's about half a millimeter smaller because when you work the bottom band, you are going to be working a stitch that is significantly wider than the main stitch pattern here. And so we want to drop down that hook size so that our band is the same size as our main um, stitch pattern. The other thing you'll need are some notions. So you're going to need scissors for cutting. You'll need a measuring tape because you are making a garment. You are going to want to make sure you're measuring and checking all of that to make sure it fits. And then I have here a case that has my yarn needles. The color work in this is actually going to be pretty simple. You're not going to have to do any like Fair Isle or Intarsia or anything like that. You're just going to be working in one color, then you're going to be done with it, and then you'll work the next color. But that does mean there are going to be some yarn ends when we do our color changes and when we begin and end. Plus, there is going to be some seaming. I know it's not my favorite thing to do in crochet either, but I found that working this in two separate panels and then seaming them together gave it a little bit better structure and it was easier to create than to try to work it as one piece somehow. Then you are also going to have some optional stitch markers. There is uh, one part in the pattern where you are going to have to work some shoulder straps on the front and back panel. And a lot of times I find that using the stitch markers to mark where you're going to have the neck opening stop and start for the shoulder straps, that kind of helps with that. They're not necessary. I also do provide the stitch counts in the pattern, so you can just follow along with those. Um, but for me, if I don't want to count, I usually like to just count them at first, pop the stitch marker on, then I can just start working as needed. Now that we have all of our supplies, we are ready to get started. So let's talk about our gauge swatch. One thing that's very important to do anytime you're making crocheted garments is that you want to make a gauge swatch and then treat it like you will when you launder the garment. So if you're going to do any sort of washing, drying, blocking, anything like that, you want to do it to your gauge swatch. So then that way you can tell roughly how many stitches you're going to wind up with within the space of about four inches or 10 centimeters. So when you count your stitches with these, you're going to be working it in the linen stitch. You're going to make sure that you are counting each of these single crochets and the chain one spaces as two stitches because that's one, two. If you count all the way across, my gauge winds up being about 23 stitches in four inches. Um, so if you get 
relatively the same as that. You can maybe be off by like half a stitch or so. Um, then that should match my gauge. If you do the row count, that's going to be the same. So each one of these, if you look at the V's of our single crochets here, so there's one single crochet, and then we got a space, and then we got another single crochet. Each one of those counts as two stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., all the way up until four inches. My gauge swatch is a little small, um, but yeah, I think it may have actually shrunk whenever I laundered it. Um, but in either case, what you're going to want to do is definitely make sure you do that. So then that way, when you um, crochet up the garment, no matter how big it is as you crochet it, you know that once you launder it, it's going to be the same size as your gauge swatch. So please make sure that you do follow that um, in order to be able to create the correct size for your um, garment. Now, another thing though, is that I do know that sometimes it's difficult to match both the stitch and the row gauge at the same time. To me, if you're working this uh, pattern, if you match the stitch gauge, that will be more important because that's going to be how it fits around things like your chest, your stomach, your, um, well, pretty much that's all it's gonna be able to fit around because there's no sleeves. Um, so that's what you're gonna wanna make sure is correct. Then you can always add or take out rows as needed. If you like have too many rows or too few rows, you can adjust that to get the length of things that you need. So if you need to get a little longer from your underarm to where you want it to sit at the bottom or longer straps, or you want a longer neck section, things like that, that's up to you and you can make those adjustments based on your row gauge if it is different than mine. Now, we talked enough about gauge. That's not even the fun part. Let's get into the fun part. And we're gonna start by working the uh, one of our panels with the bottom band. To begin our Sunday tank, we're going to start by working the bottom band, which will be the same on both the front and the back panel. And what you'll want to do is make sure you grab your smaller hook. So in my case, it's the size D 3.25 millimeter because your band with the type of stitch we will be doing is going to actually be pretty significantly wider than the linen stitch that we'll use for the main body um, if you used the same hook size. At least that was my experience. So I definitely recommend dropping down a uh, hook size, maybe even two to get it to be the right width. But explore, play around with it and see what works for you. In either case, you'll begin the band the same way. You'll start with making a slip knot. And then we are going to work a certain number of foundation half double crochets. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to do foundation stitches, um, there's tons of tutorials out there on YouTube right now. At the moment, I don't currently have a tutorial video, though if I do eventually, I will go ahead and link that in this video for you to get a more detailed look on how to do that. But in the meantime, to do a foundation stitch, what we're going to be doing is working both the chain and the stitches at one time. So for a half double crochet, we're going to start by chaining two. Then we're going to prepare to make a half double crochet by doing our yarn over. And then we're going to go into the first chain that we made and go under both loops of that chain. There we go. Then what we're going to do is we would normally yarn over and pull up a loop. And then if we wanted to complete our half double crochet, we would just yarn over and pull through all three of these loops. But before we actually do that, we're going to create our foundation chain by yarning over and just pulling through that first loop. Then after that, we yarn over and draw through all three loops. And that is our first foundation half double crochet. Then to make our next foundation half double crochet, we're going to yarn over to prepare. Then if we kind of turn our work towards us where we look at the bottom here, we can see that that extra chain that we worked into where we did that uh, yarn over and pull through one created our foundation chain right here. So that's going to be where we insert our hook for our next stitch. So we'll go under both loops, of our chain there, yarn over, pull up one loop, then we will yarn over and pull through just that first loop to create our chain, then we will yarn over 
and pull through these three loops to create our half double crochet. And now we've made two stitches and we should now have two foundation chains right here. And then you just keep going. So then we yarn over again, go into the chain of our previous stitch, the bottom chain there. We go under both loops of that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. Then we yarn over and pull through one to create the chain, and then yarn over and pull through three to create the half double crochet. So that's all you really do is you just create foundation half double crochets for as many stitches as it says in your pattern for the size that you are working on. So if you at this point want to maybe adjust the size, so if you want to make it like slightly wider, slightly narrower than the one of the standard sizes written in the pattern, here what you'll do is you'll just make however many foundation uh, half double crochets you need in multiples of six plus three. So for example, if um, I wanted to adjust it to where I'm like, okay, so I want to do, you know, like fewer stitches for whatever size I'm doing, what I need to do is find what's the nearest multiple of six. So let's say the nearest one is like 54. And then I add three to that. 54 plus three makes 57. That means I would need to make 57 foundation half double crochets. And then you just do that for both panels and boom, you've got it. You've adjusted the size. Very easy to do. That's what I really like about the way this pattern is constructed is rather than starting with chains where you're kind of stuck with the number that you chain, here you can kind of decide as you work these foundation half double crochets, do I want more? Do I want less? Is this going to fit? So on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and work up my remaining foundation half double crochets for my sample here. And I will meet you back up to talk to you about how to do row two. I've just finished working up my sample of the foundation half double crochets. So I'm just doing a smaller version here just so then that way I can demonstrate the stitches and techniques a little bit more easily. Um, and then later when it comes to some of the top shaping, I'll go ahead and show you the full sized garment. But uh, just know that I have done 12 half double crochets or sorry, foundation half double crochets plus three more to make 15. So I have my multiple of six and I have um, three. So what you're then going to do is chain one and then we'll turn our work. And then what we're going to start doing is setting up for our um, waffle stitches. So to do that, what we are going to do is actually create a ridge that kind of goes along the bottom. And that ridge is going to kind of create this nice little form, frame or border for our waffle stitches. But in either case, we're still going to be working half double crochets like we were before. But this time, instead of working our half double crochets like normal, which would be under these two loops here of the V of the top of the stitch, half double crochets have this extra feature where because we do that extra yarn over, it has this thing called a third loop. So it's this loop right here that's more towards the uh, front whenever we're looking at it from this side. We're looking at it from the opposite side. We can't really see that third loop because it's kind of tucked in the back. But anytime we turn our work, we can always see that third loop very clearly right there. So that is actually where we're going to work this next row of half double crochets. So when we work into the third loop for our half double crochet, we're just going to yarn over like normal. And then going into just this loop right here, we're going to insert our hook underneath it, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then we will yarn over and pull through all three like we do for a half double crochet. And then we just do that into the next one. So we find our next half double crochet here. That would be the V we would normally work into. We're actually going to turn and see we have this third loop right here. So we're going to work our next half double crochet under that third loop. And then we just keep going into the next one. So we find our next half double crochet here. There's the third loop right there. One thing to point out is that sometimes we might be, uh, we might mistake this kind of really tight loop right here as the third loop. That is not the third loop. That's actually 
just part of kind of this like the bottom of the half double crochet so that's not part of these top loops that are here including this third loop so make sure you don't accidentally work into this tight one right here the third loop should be this nice big loose one that we can get our hook under pretty easily here there we go spin yarn over go under that third loop pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three okay and then if you look on the other side here we can see already the effect that that has so when you work any stitch into the third loop of a half double crochet you have the top v kind of push forward away from where we are working and so on this side we can see this ridge of v stitches popping out and then these stitches are kind of set to the back so it creates this nice little frame where our stitches are almost sitting like they're framed by these little v's so that's exactly why we're working into the third loop so i'm going to keep doing that half double crocheting into the third loop across and then once we do that we will be done with row two and so i will meet you back up to talk to you about how to do row three and get started on our waffle stitch i'm coming now to the end and i want to show you where to find the third loop in our last stitch because sometimes that one can be a little bit tricky to find but it's all about just understanding how the structure of the stitches work so if we look at our stitches like normal we can see these v's that are being linked across here so we can see that our very last stitch which would be not okay it would be this one right here because this was part of when we did the chain up to create our foundation so this is our last stitch right here we know that the third loop is going to be the one that's directly behind that so it's going to be this loop that's right here sometimes this one can be tucked back a little bit more than the other ones but whenever we make sure that we look to find that top of that stitch it makes it a little bit easier to find where that third loop is right there so we know exactly where we need to insert our hook for our final half double crochet all right there And then we go ahead and turn our work and we can see that nice ridge that we've created along the bottom here so to do the next row we're going to start our waffle stitch pattern so to do these waffle stitches we're going to first start by chaining one and then half double crocheting into our very first stitch so now we're no longer working in that third loop only we're doing these like normal we're going under the two loops of the top of the stitch just like we do a normal stitch so we do our regular half double crochet and now we need to start creating the ridges of our waffle so to create the ridges what we're going to do is a front post half double crochet around the stitch that's right below it so when we work into a stitch we would normally work into the v like i just did but a post stitch is just going to be wrapped around the post of the stitch below so here we are going to just do a half double crochet like normal by yarning over but this time instead of going into the stitch we're going to find the post of this stitch right here and we're going to wrap our hook around it going through the front so that's a front post stitch once it goes around the post we are then going to yarn over pull up our loop we'll have three loops on our hook so then we yarn over and draw through all three loops to complete our half double crochet and we can see it kind of pushes that stitch out a little bit more it's not maybe significant right now but later when we work the remainder of the band you'll get to see it a little bit more prominently now anytime you work a post stitch you want to make sure that you don't accidentally work the next stitch into the same one we just worked a post around because this stitch has technically already been worked in by working around its post so this one right here which would have been the next one in the top here we're not going to do a stitch into that one instead we're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch so not this one here but the one next to it so we'll work a half double crochet and then we will work another half double crochet into the next one so we will work two half double crochets like normal 
And then we're just going to repeat from the post stitch on. So we're going to do a post and then two half double crochets. Post stitch, two half double crochets. Post stitch, two half double. All the way across until we get to the very last stitch where we will only need to do one half double crochet at the end. So I'll go ahead and show you that again. So we'll yarn over our next stitch here. If we kind of stretch it out here and see that's the post. The way to kind of look at these almost is like, it's kind of like this little upside down L shape where the top of the stitch forms kind of the L and then the stem of the L is the post that you're going to work around. So that's how you can tell which stitch is which. All right, there we go. So we got yarn over, go around the post, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Oops, there we go. Make sure we do not accidentally work into the stitch we just worked around. So instead of working into this V, we're going to work into the next one. So yarn over, insert our loop, or sorry, insert our hook, and then pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And then we do the same thing into the next one, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And that's our second repeat. So now we've got a post, two half doubles, post, two half doubles. So I'm going to continue working this across here. We do our front post, half double crochet here. And we make sure we don't accidentally work in the same stitch and we do two half double crochets. And then we do a front post, half double crochet, two half double crochets. And now you can see that we have two more stitches left. So we're going to work a front post half double crochet around this second to last stitch. And then we just work that final half double crochet in that last stitch. So go ahead and work our front post. And then that last stitch work a half double crochet. And there we go. We have now established our waffle. So right now it does not really look like anything. It just looks like some random ridges and things like that. But as we work up these rows, you're going to see the waffle uh, patterns start to come out. So that is the first row of the waffle stitch pattern. So the waffle stitch is going to be a two row repeat. So on the right side, you're going to work it just like this, half double crochet, and then you'll do a repeat of front post, two regular half double crochets, front post, two regular half doubles, two front post, two regular half doubles, so on and so forth. The next row, the wrong side row, is the second one that's part of the repeat. So we're going to chain one, make sure we're turned, and now we can see that on the back, our stitches are structured a little bit differently looking. So we've kind of got these stitches here that we can see they're kind of popping towards us. These are our ones that were worked as regular half double crochets. And then these ones that are kind of sitting towards the back, those were the front post half double crochets that are gonna be farther away from us. So now what we do is we do the opposite. So we're gonna start still with a half double crochet into our first stitch. But this time, instead of doing a front post followed by two regular half double crochets, we're actually going to do a regular half double crochet followed by two front post half double crochet stitches. So in our first stitch here, we're going to yarn over, just go regularly into that first stitch. Or it's technically the second stitch, but I always kind of treat it as these first and last stitches are just kind of to set up. So we've got that. We do a regular half double crochet. Then around these next two stitches, we're going to do front post half double crochets. So we'll kind of stretch it, see where our post is. You can usually see those little legs of the stitch. That usually helps indicate where the post is. There we go. So that's our first one. And then we do that again around the next one. So we find those little legs there. It's going to be our next post to work around. 
and there we go. I always love that crochet stitches generally have like these little legs to them if you ever like pay attention to them that's a way for me to help kind of count and make sure my stitches are right is by looking for those legs and those v's like at the top so just a quick tip there for you if you ever are like i don't ever really know how to count my crochet well that's a tip look for the legs okay so now that i've done that we're just going to repeat that across we're going to do half double crochet regularly into the next stitch and then we will do a front post half double crochet around the next two stitches. There we go. And then just repeat. So half double crochet. and two front post half double crochets. Half double crochet, two front post half doubles. And then eventually when you work across, you're going to find a similar situation at the end as you did on the previous row. We're going to have two stitches remaining and all you do is just work regular half double crochets in those last two. Because one of them, you're working the half double crochet into what was a front post stitch on the previous row. And then you just have that kind of final ending half double crochet that just kind of frames the whole thing. My hook under there without splitting the yarn or grabbing any extra loops. There we go. Okay. And now, when we turn our work, we can start to see, okay, there's a little something more going on here. So we've got our post stitches we had here, and then when we did the post stitches on the next row, it actually pushed these half double crochets forward to help kind of create a ridge here. Now this ridge doesn't look exactly like this one because we didn't work into a third loop, we worked around a post, so it does create a slightly different texture. But the idea is kind of the same, where when you work in different parts of the stitch, it kind of pushes them into different places to create the textures that we want in crochet. Now, all I have to do is just repeat those last two rows. So just as a reminder, the right side row, you always start with just a half double crochet. And then you go into your repeat of front post half double crochet, two half double crochets, front post two, front post two. So you just do that across for your right side. And then with our front post double, or sorry, front post half double, and then a just regular one half double crochet in the end. Now we can kind of maybe start to see that square that starts to form here that's going to create that waffle grid look. And then once we do that, we're going to turn and chain one here. And then we repeat the wrong side instruction. So we'll just start with a half double crochet into this first stitch. And then we do our repeat of half double and then two front post doubles. So we'll do a half double. And then front post half double. Sorry, I may have said front post double earlier. I meant front post half double. I'm sorry if I did. There we go. And then we do that again. So we'll do half double. And two front post half doubles. And then repeat that. And then at the end, just working two half double crochets to finish it off. And there we have it. So now we can start to see that waffle textured grid happening here. And so then at this point, all you do is basically just repeat those two rows 
however many times it says for your size. So depending on your size, some of the bands are going to be a little bit wider um, or a little bit shorter. But honestly, you really have the choice to make this as wide or as narrow as you really want, depending on the look that you are going for. So basically just repeat these two rows as many times as you want to, to get the width that you're going for. Now, remember that like what I discussed in the gauge section, because this is going to shrink up a bit, um, go off of measurement amounts, not what you're actually physically seeing because it is going to shrink a bit. So if you're like, I want like a three inch band or something like that, go back to your gauge and find out how many rows do I need to do for three inches. That's what you'll work. Even if it's slightly bigger now, it is going to shrink up when you launder it later. So once you do, you're going to work up until you uh, finish the last repeat of the wrong side. And then I will show you what to do for the finishing of this band. I've just finished working up another repeat. So I've got this nice little waffle stitch texture here and I'm ready to now finish off by doing another ridge along the top like I have here on the bottom. So to do that, once you finish working your last wrong side row, you're just going to work a chain one and then half double crochet normally into every stitch. So we're no longer working the waffle stitch texture. We're just doing regular half double crochet. So no post stitches or anything like that. So just work half doubles in each stitch across. I will say I'm working with a slightly smaller hook than is typically recommended for a sport weight yarn. So I'm having to go a little slower because my hook doesn't quite slip through as smoothly as I would like here, but it still works for now. So I'm just finishing up my last stitch here. And there we go. And now what we're going to do to create the ridge is we're going to do exactly the same thing up here as we did down here. But this time, instead of working half double crochets, we're actually going to start setting up for our linen stitch pattern in the next part. So to do that, we're going to yarn, uh, sorry, chain one, and then we'll locate our third loop. So as a reminder, when we look at our half double crochets, we got the V's along the top, and then we have the third loops going along the front here. Instead of doing a half double crochet, we're just going to work regular single crochets into these third loops. So without doing any yarn overs, we're going to insert our hook into that third loop, yarn over, pull up our loop, and then yarn over and pull through two. Single crochet done. And then we just do that again into the next third loop. So we do insert our hook into that third loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, single crochet. And we just single crochet into the third loop of every stitch all the way across. Okay, coming to that last one, where again, it can sometimes be a bit tricky finding that third loop, but again, if you just look, find where all the V's are connected, that's our last V and then kind of turn that third loop is going to be the one that's right next to it. So that's going to be where I work my final single crochet into that third loop. And there we have it. And then when I turn my work, you can now see our beautiful waffle stitch pattern framed by these two nice ridges on the top and bottom. And then once we've done that, we are now done with the bottom band and we are set up and ready to go for the body section of our panel. All right, and now that we have our bottom band completed with these nice little ridges here, uh, it's time for us to start working our body of our panel. So to work the body, we're actually going to trade out our smaller hook for our main hook. So this one is my size F 3.75 millimeter. So you just go ahead and insert that into the loop here. 
And then we are going to now start working linen stitches. So linen stitches are going to be worked in a repeat of two rows, just like when we did the waffle stitch. So the right side row, you're going to work the same way. You're going to chain one, and then into this first stitch, we're just going to work a regular single crochet. Then we are going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and then single crochet into the next stitch. And then we just repeat that. We chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. And there we go. And you just repeat that over and over. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next stitch. Now, one of the things that some people might do as like an error when they work the linen stitch is they'll remember to do the chain one, but then they might forget to skip the next stitch and accidentally work into that stitch instead. And that will mess up and increase your uh, stitch count. And we want to make sure we avoid that. Uh, plus also it scrunches all the stitches on there and we want to keep it as a nice smooth fabric. So always make sure you're skipping one after your chain one. The other mistake is sometimes people forget to do the chain one and then they'll just skip and work a single crochet. That we want to avoid also because then that decreases our, chain, our amounts and it creates these squished in stitches that we can't really work into later. So we always want to make sure chain one, skip one. You should always have the same number of single crochets and chains as we had on the row below. So we're going to keep doing that all the way across. And then we will end where we will skip a stitch and then we will have one final stitch where we will work our last single crochet. And there we go. That's the first row, the first repeat of our linen stitch. So it doesn't really look like much right now, but that's because it really shines once we start working back into the rows of these linen stitches. So to work the wrong side repeat, we're going to chain one, and then we will work a single crochet into this first stitch. Then we're going to find our chain one space. So when we have our very first row, the chain one spaces are a little bit tough to kind of find. But again, that idea of looking for the legs of our stitches is going to help us. So every single crochet is going to have this V where it's two legs are coming out of the stitch it was worked into below. So those are our single crochets. So that means that between every one of these single crochets, that is where our chain one space is located. So we're going to kind of stretch it out. And you can see right there that that's the space we're going to be working into when we work our stitches. So if I find this single crochet here, this single crochet here, we stretch in between them, there's my space. So that's my chain one space. So I'm going to now work a single crochet into that chain one space. And now I'm ready to repeat my linen stitch pattern. So I just chain one, skip this single crochet, and then work a single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, skip this next single crochet, and then work into this chain one space next to it. And you just keep doing that all the way across. Chain one, skip the single crochet, work into the chain one space. And then just like at the beginning where we had two single crochets, we're going to end with two single crochets right next to each other. So we're going to come to our final chain one space here because we've got our single crochet here, chain one space, and then our final single crochet right here. We'll work our single crochet into this chain one space. And then we just end with a single crochet into our last stitch. And there we go. That's how we work our wrong side repeat of the linen stitch. And then you just repeat those two rows over and over. We're going to chain one, turn our work, 
we will do a single crochet into this very first stitch. And then we're going to chain one. And then we'll find that this next stitch is a single crochet. So we'll skip that. And then we will work into the chain one space next to it. So that's going to be, it was my single crochet, single crochet, chain one space in between. So we do that, single crochet into there. And then we chain one, skip the single crochet, work into the chain one space, chain one, skip the single crochet, work into the chain one space. And just repeat that across. And because we're on the right side, we're going to end where we work a single crochet into this last chain one space. We will chain one, skipping the next single crochet. We just have our final single crochet to work into. And voila, we are done with our right side repeat. And then we just do that again on the wrong side. So turn, chain one, single crochet into our first stitch, and then single crochet into the chain one space next to it. And then we will chain one and start doing our linen stitch repeat, skipping our single, working into the chain one space. So with all of these linen stitches, you're always working between the legs of our single crochet. So you're not working into the legs themselves. So we're wanting to avoid these stitches. So if you accidentally work between these stitches here, you know you've done something wrong. You need to go back and make sure that you're skipping those and doing a chain one and then single crocheting just into the chain one spaces. All right. I think. Yeah. I, okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. And then remember on the wrong side, you're always going to end with two single crochets, one into this last chain one space, and then just one into that final stitch. And there you have it. So then you just repeat those stitches. So now we can see a little bit better how the linen stitch is working up. So you see these kind of alternating Vs where the single crochets are happening here. And it creates that nice little kind of gridded texture there that almost looks a little bit like it's knitted. Um, and it creates a very nice, smooth, breathable fabric, just like I talked about earlier. So all you're going to do now is work up the remainder of your body panel using these linen stitch repeats. And you just work however many rows it says to do for your pattern. And you should end on a wrong side row. Once you do, you're going to come back and then I will talk to you about how to then do the color change when we need to start working with our contrasting color at the top. four times. So one, two, three, four. So we should have all these yarn over loops around our hook. Then what we're going to do is locate the third single crochet down. So this first one, we see here that's one. And if I drop straight below it, skipping that space, here's my second one. Then I drop straight below that. There's my third uh, single crochet there below. So that's the one I'm going to be working around. So I'm going to work around the legs of this single crochet by going between the two stitches that are right here. So there should be a single crochet next to it from the end, but we're just going to go in between there as best you can. Once we're in between it, we then just pop our hook around. And now our hook should be wrapping around the post of this single crochet. So our legs should be over our hook. And all you do is yarn over, pull up a loop, 
and that secures our spike to this single crochet. Now, the next part, regardless of whatever spike you're working, you're always going to finish it the same way. You're going, you're going to yarn over and draw through two and keep repeating that until you have three loops left on your hook. So in this case, I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, and I still don't have three, so I yarn over and pull through two again. And then I yarn over and pull through two again. And once I've done that, I should now have three loops on my hook. At this point, I'm no longer drawing through two. I yarn over and draw through three. And what that does is it actually sets it up for what we're going to be doing on our next row. Um, and I'll talk about that when we get there. But just know that you always do draw through two until the end where you draw through three. Now, because this counts as a stitch, this spike counts as a stitch, we are not going to work into the single crochet that's behind it. We're going to go ahead and skip that because that counts right here. But instead, we're going to work our next half double crochet into the chain space next to that. So we'll work a half double crochet into that chain one space. Now, we're not working linen stitches on this row, so we're not doing any chaining one and skipping to make our stitches. The only skipping we do is the ones behind our spikes. So we're going to work our next half double crochet into this single crochet right here, because you need to work two half double crochets in between your spikes. There we go. So we got this one in the chain space, this one in the single crochet. Now we're ready to do spike B. Now spike B, you'll find, is actually not going to start in front of a single crochet. It starts in one of our chain one spaces. And that's okay, because we don't really worry about the chain spaces when we count. We're just going to start by dropping below that and finding our first single crochet here. So that's going to be our first one that we are going to drop down to. So to do spike B, we're not going to yarn over four. We're going to yarn over five. One, two, three, four, five. And this one's going to be a bit longer, so it's going to drop down, and so it needed uh, more of these loops. So when we look below, we're going to drop down and count that there's one, two, we keep going straight down, three, keep going straight down, four. We're going to work around this fourth single crochet. So it's going to be dropping significantly lower than this one. So by working around that fourth single crochet, we're going to go around the legs, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then we just do the same thing we did for spike A. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and just keep yarning over and pulling through two until you have three loops remaining on your hook. Then you yarn over and pull through all three. And there we go. And notice it's kind of like it curls when you're working it at first because there, you're not really giving it enough give. But once you do those pull through twos, it allows the stitch to then be able to stretch up. And now your fabric is flat again. So it lies nice and flat here. Now there's going to be some, you know, loose spacing behind it. If you really want to, you can always go back and like sew that down and secure it a little bit better. I personally don't think it really matters or gets in the way especially after you launder this and this all kind of shrinks down a little bit anyway, it should be fine. All right, there we go. So now that we've done this spike, we will just skip that chain space that would be behind it because that counts as the stitch right here. And then we work a half double crochet into the next single crochet here. And then a half double crochet into the next chain one space. And now we're ready to do the third spike, spike C. Now, spike A was in front of a single crochet. Spike C will also be in front of a single crochet because it's going to alternate. So we're going to count that as our first one. But this time we're going to go a little bit shorter. Instead, we're just going to be yarning over three times. One, two, three for spike C. And then we're just going to go down to the second single crochet. So this is our first one. And then we drop directly down. That's our second one. So we're going to work this spike just around the second single crochet. And then we just pull a loop through, and then we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and now we're already to our yarn over and pull through three because that one's just a little shorty spike. 
And there we go. We can see that it's slightly shorter than this one right here. So it gives that that kind of alternating look. Then I skip that single crochet behind it, work my half double crochet into the next space, and a half double crochet into the next single crochet. Then I'll be to a chain one space, and now I'm ready to work the fourth and final type of spike, and this is going to be spike D. So spike D is going to be worked a little bit longer than spike B. So we're going to be dropping down a little further. So instead of doing um, yarn over a five, we're going to do a yarn over of six. So we're going to yarn over one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to go and work into the fifth single crochet. So dropping now, we've got this one right here. So there's one. Dropping directly below, there's two. Keep going directly below, there's three, four, five, right there. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go all the way down here, go around the legs of that single crochet, ah, just like that, and then yarn over and pull up my loop. Again, it's going to pull this down really far, but it's okay. Once we get this stitch completed, it's going to flatten right back out. So. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Oh, 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 oh no, I lost it. Here, it's okay, it's okay. I know exactly where I'm going and how many I need to do. I just yarn over six. There we go. Find my fifth one. So one, two, three, four, five. Go around that fifth one. And then Back to where I was, yarn over, pull through two, a bunch of times. Being careful not to accidentally let any of the loops slip off. There we go. And now I'm down to my last three loops on my hook. I yarn over and pull through all three. And then I flatten that back out. And we can see that that's our really nice extra long spike right there. Okay? All right. And then all you do from here is just repeat those four spikes in sequence. So you just keep working two half double crochets in between, and then you'll work the next spike. So you'll do spike A, then spike B, spike C, spike D. And you can usually tell which one you need to work next if you kind of go back and count by fours, because this is in sets of four. So if you're like, oh, I don't know which spike I need to work, just go back and go one, two, three, four. Oh, looky there, that's the one that I need to work. Um, so that's gonna help you. But regardless, you're going to work that repeat across. Then, depending on your size, you're either going to end by working a final spike A or a spike C. It really doesn't matter which one, just as long as you're making sure you're doing the right number of repeats. But regardless, you're going to work until you get to, let's see, we're going to skip that. We're going to work to these last stitches. So we'll do our final two half double crochets here into the single and the chain one space. And then now you'll see we will have two stitches remaining on our row because we're gonna work a spike down this one and then we'll just work one half double crochet into that final one. And this final spike for me is going to be spike A, so that's gonna be a yarn over of four. And then I drop down three, so there's one, two, three. And there we go, going around. The legs of that final one. Be a little finicky here because it's having to go between two single crochets. There we go, okay? On that leg there, yarn over, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through my final three. And then, I work my final half double crochet into this last single crochet of the row. And then when you do that, you're going to find that your panel has all these nice, beautiful spikes just kind of dripping down. And you can actually 
get very playful and experimental with this. If you decide, you know what, I want all of them to be the same size. If you're like, you know what, that's going to be the look I'm going for, go for that. Don't follow the spike pattern I tell you to. Just do spike A or spike B or whichever one you like the length of more and just keep repeating that one over and over and over and over again. Or if you're like, I want to try to maybe experiment and do like a six spike repeat and get some really extra long ones that go way down here on the body, just feel free to do that. The rule that I do is that the number of yarn overs you need is one more than the number of single crochets that you drop. So for instance, if I needed to drop here, this was two single crochets down. So I needed to do two plus one, so three yarn overs. What that does is it gives you the yarn overs that you need to make your stitch and plus that extra one for that third loop at the top. So play around with that. And then once you get to that part, I'm then going to show you what to do for the next row because now we're going to create the ridge here that transitions us into the upper part of our panel. All right, so I've turned my work and I'm now facing the wrong side of my color work here. And we can see that our spikes and our half double crochets are all kind of a little bit maybe like lumpy or whatever, but all of them are actually going to have the same structure here at the top. Now, the reason that we wanted to pull through those last three loops is because that mimics how a half double crochet has this third loop. So just like when we would work into third loops down here, when we would work in the band, we're going to do that exact same thing up here in our color. So to do that, we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in the third loop of each of these stitches. So remember the V on the top are the top front and back loop. And then the one that's facing us right here, that's going to be our third loop. So we'll just insert our hook into that third loop, pull up our loop and complete our single crochet. And then we do that into the third loop of the next stitch. So third loop here, single crochet. And there we go. So if you find that you're like, wait, there's not a third loop on my stitch. It's possible you may have accidentally worked through two stitch, like two loops when you finished one of these stitches, like uh, one of the spikes. So if that does happen, just kind of fudge it. If you don't want to have to go all the way back and try to fix a particular stitch, just kind of like shove it somewhere back here, maybe like into one of these um, loop yarn overs here. The point is we want to make sure we're not working into any of these top loops because we want that V to push forward and form that ridge. So there we go. So now I'm going to keep working single crochets into each of these loops, these third loops here. Okay, reaching my final ones here. So we've got this single crochet through this back loop. And then we have our last half double crochet here. So those are my top V stitch loops or V loops. And then there's my third loop right there. It's a little tighter, but once I find it, I can kind of work my hook into it. And there we go. Final single crochet. Then when we turn our work, you can see that the top of our spike row now has that nice, beautiful ridge, just like the ridges that separated out our band and our body. Now, all you have to do is just continue working the exact same pattern we did here in the body, just in our new color. So you'll just keep working our linen stitch rows, just like normal, and you're going to work those for a certain number of rows that it states in your pattern, and then we will be ready to start working our armhole shaping. So I'm going to go ahead and get my panel set up. And then I will show you how to do the armhole shaping in the next part. I've gone ahead and worked up one of my panels to this point. So as you can see, I've got my uh, waffle stitch bottom band. I've got all these linen stitch rows done. And then I also went ahead and worked up the section where I've got the little uh, drippy looking spikes here, um, plus the rows that I needed to make with the contrasting color. 
And now I'm to the point where I'm ready to start shaping for the armholes. So this is going to be the same, whether it's the front or the back panel, the armhole shaping is done exactly the same way. And even though you might have a different decrease pattern, depending on your size, the actual way you decrease is going to be the same. So I'm going to be showing you the techniques for how to do that. So the first one, is that in the first stitch, you're always just going to start on the right side with a regular linen stitch. So we're going to go ahead and chain one. And then remember that a linen stitch is a combination of a single crochet and a chain one skip one. So every time I say linen stitch or the pattern instructions say linen stitch, you're always working a single crochet, chain one, and make sure you skip the next stitch. So we're going to single crochet in this first one. Okay, oh, that's a little loose. I'll go ahead and tighten that up a little better. There we go. So single crochet into that first one, chain one, and then make sure that this next stitch, which is a single crochet, we're going to skip that. And then we're going to start working into these chain spaces. So depending on your size, it might say work um, a single crochet in each of the next, you know, like four spaces or 10 spaces or six spaces or whatever, you're going to just do that. So it's just single crochets, no linen stitches. So in the next chain one space, I'm going to work a single crochet. I'm not going to do a chain one because it's not a linen stitch. Instead, I'm just going to skip over to the next chain space here, not working into this single crochet, and then just work another single. So that's two. So let's say that for my size, it says that I need to work eight. So I'll go ahead and work six more. So I work single crochets across the next six chains here. So there's another chain space. Again, I am not chaining one, but I am going ahead and skipping the single crochets in between. So I believe that's four. Yeah, four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. Then your instructions are going to tell you to go ahead and work linen stitches in the chain one spaces across until you have a certain amount remaining. So what that means is that starting in this next chain one space right here, which means I'm skipping over this single crochet here, but I'm not chaining one yet, I'm going to start a linen stitch. So without any chaining here, because this was just a regular single crochet, I'm going to go into the next chain space and begin my first linen stitch. So that one is where we will do the single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, and that will bring me back to a chain one space. So then I just work linen stitches, like we've been doing in each of the chain spaces across until it tells me a certain number of spaces remaining. So just to kind of quickly recap here, what that's done with these single crochets is by eliminating these chain one spaces that we would normally have with the linen stitch, we've actually decreased the stitch count because our chain spaces count as stitches. So rather than having a, a chain one in between each of these single crochets, we now just have regular single crochets. All right, so then what you'll do is you'll work until the number of chain spaces remaining that your pattern says to do for your size. So for me, it says to work until I have nine chain one spaces remaining. So I'll go ahead and work those up and then meet you back to show you what to do when you get to the end. I have now worked all the way across. I've just worked one more linen stitch. So that means I've done my single crochet chain one and I'm skipping this single crochet. So now I should have nine chain one spaces remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to basically repeat what we did on the other side. So you're going to work however many single crochets it says to in your pattern for your size. So in my case, I will work eight single crochets just in these chain spaces. So there's a single crochet. I don't do any chain one, but I do go ahead and skip the single crochet and then go into the next chain space and work another single crochet. So there's two and then do the same thing again three, and 
then four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now I'm going to have one more chain space left. And all you do in that one is go ahead and work through a linen stitch as your final stitches here. So making sure we're skipping this last single crochet right before the chain space and without doing any chain one, we're going to uh, linen stitch by doing a single crochet. Oops, split my yarn there. The single crochet, chain one, skip one, work my final single crochet in the last stitch. And then once you do that, you're done with the decrease portion on your right side row of your um, armhole shaping. So now what we've done is by doing this, you've decreased by the same number of stitches as you worked single crochets. So um, just because of like how the math worked out with like where the chain spaces fall and everything like that, that's just a nice, easy way of knowing your decrease count. So if you worked, you know, like five or 18 or however many it says for your pattern size, that's how many uh, stitches you've just decreased on both sides of your tank. So now to do the second row of decrease, you're going to turn and chain one. And then you're going to start off doing exactly the same thing as we've been doing before, but there's going to be a difference in how we work across these single crochets. And I just want to make sure I show you so you don't, um, so you know where you need to be putting your stitches and not get confused. Okay, so in our very first stitch, we're just going to work a regular single crochet like we've done on all of our wrong side rows. Then we're going to have our first chain one space like we've had before, and we're going to linen stitch into that space, which means we're going to do our single crochet. And then we will chain one and then skip the next single crochet. But now the next stitch we work into is not a chain space because we don't have any chain spaces across these single crochets. So we're going to just be working into single crochets like we would normally. So by skipping this first single crochet, my next linen stitch will be worked across this single crochet and the one next to it because that's going to be the one I skip. So into this next single, we're going to work the single crochet portion of our linen stitch. Then we will chain one, skip this next single crochet, and then work the next linen stitch into this single crochet. So we will single in here chain one then we have another single crochet here to skip and then the next stitch we work into is still for me a single crochet but for all sizes what's going to happen is eventually if you do this right after you get across all your single crochets and you've done the uh, single crochet chain one skip one of your linen stitch you should find that eventually when you skip this single crochet, you'll start working back into chain one spaces. Now, if you find that you've worked a single crochet here, you do your chain one and the next stitch you're about to skip is a chain space, that means you did something wrong back here. So you're going to want to go back and undo what you did and start back over and carefully make sure you're working a stitch by doing single crochet, chain one, skip the next one, single crochet into the next one, chain one, skip the next one, so on and so forth. But if you do it right, you'll have your last single crochet to skip, and then we will just work linen stitches like normal into our chain spaces. Okay, and we can see that there's a little bit of like some waviness some curling that's starting to happen because we have decreased this uh, section pretty dramatically. If you ever look at any tank top, you'll see that the armholes don't decrease evenly. They actually decrease very rapidly at the bottom to give us uh, that nice curve around the um, underarm. And then they decrease much more gradually at the top until they basically just go straight up and down. So that's the way I've designed this is to mimic that type of look. So these first couple of rows, this first decrease section is going to be very dramatic decreasing. So it's going to create that very um, sharp uh, curve there. 
So if you're going to, sorry, um, I'm going to now uh, work across the remainder of this row, and then I will show you how it looks when you get to those last sets of single crochets and show you to make sure that you don't get uh, confused on that section either. I'm now reaching the part where I'm about to start working across the single crochets here at the end. And so I'm just showing you that we work them exactly the same way as we did at the beginning. Just making sure we're always doing our single crochet, chain one, skip one, the right way we need to for our linen stitch. So I've got my last chain space here that I need to work into. So I've got a single crochet, chain one, skip the next single crochet, and now the next stitch I will work into is a single crochet. So I'll go ahead and work a linen stitch into that one. So I will single crochet into there, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next one, chain one, skip this next stitch, single crochet into this next one, and then keep repeating that. And then I'll find that if I did it right, my last chain one, skip one will bring me to the end here where I've got my last chain one space and my last single crochet, just like previous wrong side rounds, or sorry, wrong side rows. So I just do the exact same thing I do there. So once I skip this last single crochet here, I'm at my last chain one space, I'm going to just work a single crochet into that chain one space, and then a single crochet into the last stitch. And there we have it. And so now that you've seen how to do all that, the rest of the decrease rows should be easy enough to follow. The only difference will be in the number of single crochets you might work across the chain spaces um, and the number of rows that you work them, just depending on your size. I'll go ahead and kind of show you how to get started once you do the third row. So depending on your size, it might give you a different number of single crochets this time, or it might give you the same number of single crochets. So for some sizes, the math just worked out where one row you might do like, you know, six, and then the other one you do four or something like that. Um, but in either case, it's worked exactly the same way. So first stitch, we'll just do a regular linen stitch. So we will single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet into this chain space. and then. We're not going to chain one or skip, or we're not going to chain one. We are going to skip. We're not going to chain one because now we're just working our single crochets into our chain spaces and skipping over the single crochets in between. So that eliminates those chain ones and therefore decreases the stitch count for us. So we just keep working single crochets like normal. And you'll find that it's starting to get maybe a tad bit stretched out and um, your stitches might be coming a bit bigger. Try to. Um, keep your tension down still because we do want these to decrease. We don't want to have our stitches just stretch to accommodate because then that's not going to create the shaping we want. So we definitely want this nice sharp decrease to happen where we've got that like strong diagonal angle happening here. Okay. Now that you know how to do that, the rest of the armhole shaping should be easy enough to follow. Um, you'll follow the first section. You'll work a certain type of uh, decrease numbers. Then it'll say to do uh, the next part, part two, you'll just do fewer decreases. It's the exact same technique. You're just going to be doing fewer single crochets into them. And then part three, you're going to be doing only one or two decreases and the rest of them you're just working linen stitch in pattern back and forth like before. So you just pay attention to how many rows you do, then work the decrease on whatever row it indicates, then you should be ready to go. Then, whew, after all of that, it's going to then tell you to work a certain number of rows without any decrease. That just means we're going to continue working like we did our body, just linen stitches back and forth. And you're going to do that a certain number of rows depending on whether you're working your front panel or your back panel. So your front panel is going to need fewer rows because the neck on the front goes down farther. On the back panel, they're going to go up higher because the neck part of that is going to be shorter. So Got a lot of work ahead of you, a lot of decreasing to do, um, a lot of paying attention to row counts and things like that. But now that you should be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and work mine up, and then I will meet you back to talk to you about how to start doing the shoulder straps and the neck shaping.
All right, I've just finished working up my decreases for my armhole and then the remainder of my front panel. Um, as you can see, we've got this nice dramatic curve going on. Now, there might be a little bit of puckering that's happening down here from where we did our more drastic decreasing. That's okay. That'll wash out, or if it doesn't quite wash out, you can always feel free to block that to help flatten that out um, before you seam your panels together. That is up to you. But in either case, we are now ready to begin working on our shoulder straps. So to work our shoulder straps, in the pattern it's going to instruct that you need two stitch markers. So it's going to tell you to count in a certain amount from both sides, and then you're going to mark the stitch that you um, count to. So that way it marks out these kind of center stitches, but also tells us where we're going to stop working one strap as we work that one separately and then where to join so that we can work the second strap separately. And that way we've got those two straps side by side. So for my size, it says that I'm going to mark the 22nd stitch coming in from both sides. So I count here. I've got one, two, three. And remember, chain spaces count as a stitch as well as the single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And just so then that way you made sure you did it right, every size, no matter how many you're pulling, you're going in by, is going to place their stitch marker in a single crochet. So you're not placing it in a chain one space, you're placing it in a single crochet. Now if I count from the opposite side here, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two. So I will go ahead and mark that stitch now. And there we go. I have now marked out the spaces for my straps. And then I've got this little center space here that's going to be the bottom of the neck portion of the neck opening on the front. When you work your back panel, you're going to do it exactly the same way. It should actually be the exact same number. The only difference in the back panel is going to be the decrease pattern itself. But once I show you how to do the decreasing on the front, it's exactly the same way that you do it on the back. You're just going to follow a different count when it comes to the number of you know, single crochets and things like that that you work and the number of rows because the back is going to have fewer rows to work and fewer times of having to decrease. All right, anyway, now that we've done that, <laughs> it's going to tell you that you're going to now work in pattern. So you're going to continue working linen stitches up until you have a certain number of chain spaces remaining from your stitch marker. So in my case, I will just work until I have six spaces remaining. So I'm going to chain one, and then I'll work a linen stitch in my first one. And then I linen stitch into each space, just like I've been doing normally. It's actually going to come up pretty quickly when I reach those six because there's really not a whole lot of spaces here. Gotta pay really close attention. Sorry, my light was messing up on me and I wanna make sure you be able to see, so I had to fix it. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six remaining. Okay, yes, so I have six chain one spaces remaining. And now we're going to decrease here just the same as we did down here at the armhole. And that's going to give us that nice curve when we decrease into our strap. So we're not going to have these sharp angles on our front. We're going to have these nice gentle curves. So in the next four chain spaces, I'm just going to work regular single crochets. So we're just going to go single crochet into that chain space. We're not chaining one, but we still go ahead and skip this next single crochet and work the next one into our next chain space. So there's two, and then three, and then four. And then after that, you're going to linen stitch in the next chain space. So again, we're just going to be skipping. We didn't add a chain here. So then we just go single crochet, chain one, skip one, and we should now have one more space before our stitch marker. That is going to end with a single crochet. Sorry, get my split my yarn there. There we go. And boom, there we go. We've got it done. So now you can see 
that we have decreased our number of stitches on this side, but we've not decreased on this side because we want this side to continue going up straight. We're only decreasing on the side with the neck. So that'll help you remember when and where you need to be placing your single crochets. So now that we're done with row one, uh, for my size, that's going to be the most dramatic decrease. For most sizes, that will be the case too. Um, for some of the larger sizes, you're going to be doing this again a second time. So you'll do this, do the next row, and then repeat this row, and then do the next row. But all the sizes after that are then going to work exactly the same. So we'll chain one. And then on my wrong side, we're just going to work it the same way we did when we worked the wrong side down in the armhole. So we're just going to start by working a single crochet in our first stitch. Then we will linen stitch in to this space and in every stitch that we come across here. Well, we're going to linen stitch across all these stitches. We don't work into every stitch. Sorry. All right. So we're going to single crochet, chain one, skip one. The next stitch is going to be one of our single crochets from our decrease. So we will go ahead and do our linen stitch into that single crochet. We will single, chain one, skip one. We'll have probably another single crochet to work in here. So we will single crochet, chain one, skip one. And then eventually, once you work across all these single crochets, you should now be ready to start skipping this last one and working into a chain space. And that way, you know, oh yeah, I skipped all the correct amounts and so on. So there we go. So then I just work my remaining part of my pattern the same way I've been doing this whole time. Nice and easy. And then just like on every wrong side row, we're going to end with a single crochet in these last two. And we are done. Now, depending on your size, you may have to repeat exactly those same rows just one more time because that'll get you that big dramatic um, curve at the bottom um, just for some of those larger sizes. But for most of the sizes, this is the most dramatic decrease and we're going to be done with that part. And then once you're done with the dramatic section of decreases, we're ready to start doing our gradual decreases. So gradual decreases are all going to be worked the same for every single size. The only difference is going to be how many rows you work those decreases. So for the smaller sizes, you're not going to be working very many rows. For the larger sizes, you'll work more. And then we'll end with some non-decrease rows just to finish it out. So for my size, I'm going to be working however many rows. I can't remember. I, I need to go back and look at my pattern. Um, but every one of them will start the same way here. So here we go. So you'll just linen stitch in the first stitch, then in each chain, one space, each chain one space, sorry, across, until you have three spaces remaining. Okay, so we have one, two, oh, I went a little too far. Here we go. So now that I have three spaces remaining, I'm going to now work single crochets in these next two spaces. So we're just going to do single into that next chain space, single into the next chain space, and then we will linen stitch in this last chain space, and then single crochet in the final stitch. And there we go. Then we chain one turn and then we do our wrong side so we do our linen or sorry our single crochet in the first stitch then we linen stitch across making sure that when we skip one the next linen stitch or the next stitch we work our linen stitch into will be a single crochet and then when we skip the next single crochet we should be to our chain one spaces again And then we just work in pattern all the way across. Ending with a single crochet in each of the last two stitches. There we go. Now if I turn my work here. Yep. 
Now, if I turn my work, we can see that we are starting to see that curve start to happen here at the uh, bottom of our neck. And for me, I believe I just checked, it's actually going to be one more time that I'll do that. Then after that, all my decreasing will be done. The width of my shoulder strap will be established. And then I just work whatever number of rows is left for me. And then my strap is going to be done. So you're going to follow along your with your pattern, working your first set of decreases, then all your remaining decreases the same way as I just showed. And then you'll just work the remaining strap the with all the regular linen stitch pattern. Once you're done with that, and once I'm done with mine, I'm going to meet you back up to talk to you about joining and working the other strap on the other side. Once you're ready to work your other strap, um, whether it's the front or the back, it works exactly the same. What we do is we will locate our stitch marker and then the stitch, the chain one space that's right next to that, we're actually going to join and form a single crochet. So we'll just grab our yarn here, slip it through, if I can do it right. <laughs> so we find our chain one space, insert, grab our yarn, pull it through, and then I'm going to chain one, and then I will linen stitch into this first chain one space. And now, what we're going to do is since we're on the side where the neck is, we're actually going to begin with our decrease pattern. So we're not going to be uh, doing linen stitches um, until we finish this part. So on this side, what we're going to start is immediately go and work our single crochets. So once we make our first linen stitch in the next chain space, we're going to work a single crochet. And then in the next space, we work a single crochet and you just do that for however many spaces it says to do for your size. Once I do that, I am then ready to finish out by working linen stitches in the remaining spaces. So I will do a linen stitch into this next one, linen stitch into this next one, and then keep doing that. And then you'll linen stitch in that final space and then end with a single crochet in your last stitch. And there you go. That's all there is to it. So once you're joined and you do your decrease pattern, you're pretty much just going to work the remainder of this strap exactly the same as you did for the first strap, just doing the opposite. So you're going to be doing, instead of your decreasing on the B or at the end of the row, you're decreasing at the beginning because the beginning of the row is now on the side where the neck shaping is. So now that you've done that, if you need any help further with like how to do the decreasing, uh, you can always go back and rewatch the one with the straps. Or if you want to, you can also go back to the armhole shaping. I work through a lot of the decreases there, um, especially when they're at the beginning of the row. So if you need any further help with that, you can. Otherwise, you now have everything you need to know to finish out the straps on both your front and your back panel. Once you have both panels worked up, you've got quite a bit of work to do ahead of you, and so do I. Um, once we're finished with both panels, I will meet you back up and talk to you about how to seam them together. All right, I have finished working up my back and my front panel here. So now it is time for us to begin seaming them together. So to seam them together, one of the first things you're going to do is actually place them wrong sides out with the right sides facing each other. Because what we're about to do is create a seam and we want to make sure that that seam is hidden on the inside of our tank top. So we don't want anything appearing on the outside. So we want to work everything wrong side out. So one of the first things you'll do is just kind of line up the sides of your tank top and they should line up pretty nicely to where the uh, color at the top should line up perfectly with the other color and then you'll just kind of match row for row and then you have a couple of choices. You could either go ahead and cut off a length of yarn 
and then you can take a yarn needle and just whip stitch these together. I personally don't like to do that because I don't like to estimate how much yarn I need. I prefer to slip stitch. And since it's going to be on the inside anyway, the ridge that slip stitching causes doesn't really bother me for something like this. So if you are doing whip stitching, um, you'll go ahead and just, you know, take your needle, take your yarn, attach it as needed, and then you just whip stitch, matching row to row, all the way up until you get to this point where we started to decrease for the underarm. And you can use stitch markers to kind of mark where that is if you want, or just kind of eyeball it to, your, to the best of your abilities. And then if you want to slip stitch, like I'm about to do, I'm going to demonstrate. So the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and take a slip knot, pop that onto our hook here, okay? And then I'm going to go here into this corner and just kind of matching up the corners here. I'm just going to insert my hook through the side of this first row. There we go. And then into the side of this first row. And then taking my yarn here, I'm just going to yarn over and just slip stitch, pulling those both together. There we go. And then you can weave in that end now to secure it, or you can wait to weave it in later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just weave it in later, um, but I am going to go ahead and put that out of the way. There we go. So then just lining up row to row, I'm going to just insert my hook into the side of my first panel and then into the side of the second panel. Yarn over and just slip stitch those together. And then I just keep doing that all the way across. So into the side, into the side, yarn over and slip stitch. And if you're not exactly matching up perfectly every row to every single row, that's okay. If you do get off by maybe like one or two stitches as you're going, just kind of fudge it, like adjust as needed, um, because there's no need to rip back the entire seam just to try to find where you got off by one or two stitches. It's not really that big of a deal. Um, now, if you are getting off by a lot of stitches, that is going to cause some problems. It will cause puckering, misalignment, it won't fit or lay right. So definitely make sure you're trying to be as accurate as you can, but um, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. There we go, okay. So I'm gonna get through the side of my ribbing here, just slip stitching together. And the key point that I'm really making is I want to make sure that once I get to this section, which was where like that ridging happened on the front, I want that to be matching with this ridge section on the other panel as well. So as long as those match up, the rest of this should be fine. And there we go. Okay, so now that I've reached on top of that ridging, one thing I can do is go ahead and just open this up to see how it looks on the other side. So I can see here that my seaming has lined up pretty well. So I've got the ridging here just continues to work its way across there. I've got the waffle stitch ridging pattern here continuing on this side as well and then the bottoms seem to line up pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So now for the remainder of the body, it'll be a little bit easier to see because the linen stitches are just single crochets in the side. So I just have to match single crochet to single crochet. So here's my first single crochet here, insert. And then I find the first single crochet on this side, insert there, and then just slip stitch those together. And then I do the same thing into this next single crochet, into that next single crochet, and slip stitch together. And then I just keep doing that all the way until I get to the corner. Now one thing that I do want to note is that because you did color work here at the top, you have a couple of choices. One is that for these eight rows where 
this color changes, you could switch to your contrasting color, seam it using that color if you really want it to blend in. But because it's uh, the seam is going to be hidden on the inside, it's really not going to show through on the other side if you use your main color. So whether you want to just continue with the main color all the way up the side, you can do that. If you want to switch at this point to your contrasting color to seam it, it doesn't really matter. It's your personal preference. But in either case, you're going to seam it all the way up to the bottom of the underarm. And then you're going to repeat that on the other side. Once you do that, I will meet you back up to talk to you about seaming the shoulder straps. I've just finished slip stitching all the way up my main color, and uh, what I wanted to do is go ahead and show you if you are planning on switching colors, uh, my technique that I would like to show you. I've gone ahead and seamed all the way up the side of my main color, and I still have the rows of the contrasting color, and I know I said earlier that you could use whatever color you really want to, but I did want to go ahead and show you if you are going to switch to your contrasting color to seam up the rest of this, uh, then I'm going to show you what to do for that. So one thing you're going to want to do is once you reach your final one of your main color, you'll go ahead and actually fasten off But you're not going to pull it through quite yet. First, you're going to actually go ahead and insert your hook into the first stitch or the first row of your contrasting color and the first row of your contrasting color on the opposite side. Okay. And then we're going to take our ball of contrasting color here and go ahead and just slip stitch that in like so. Then you're also on your way going to grab that uh, act, that uh, tail yarn from your main color and grab that as well and just pull it through. And when you pull it through, you can just kind of pull both up just really, really high. And then this one will just pop through. And that will help secure, especially once you go back and weave it in, the final loop of your main color. Then when you start your next one of your contrasting color, making sure to keep everything here on the wrong side. We're going to go into our second row and then into our second row. And we're going to actually grab both the tail yarn and our active uh, yarn, pull it through and do the same thing. Pull it tall or if you want to just go ahead and pull the tail through and then that will help secure the two colors here at this border where they were joined. So then that way you can continue working the slip stitches to finish out your contrasting color, but not worry about it coming undone because you're just joining with slip stitches. So yeah, it, it's just a more secure way to make sure that you're getting the two colors transitioned. So I've still got just a few more here. Okay, and then my last one here, slip stitching it, and then I go ahead and just fasten off and pull that tail through, and then I'm able to just weave in all of these loose ends. So now that I've shown you that, you should be able to finish up the other side, uh, like I said to do earlier, and then uh, we can go ahead and talk about joining the shoulder straps after that. All right, I'm ready to join the shoulder straps together. So one thing to point out is that on your shoulder straps, your very last stitch where you fastened off can oftentimes be fairly loose. And if you're not careful, it can actually like loosen up and come undone. So one thing I might recommend is going ahead and taking this uh, strand and either weaving it in or what I like to do is I can actually go ahead and just insert my hook into that stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through and then just pull it all the way through. And what that does is just kind of adds a little bit of extra security there so that the stitch isn't as likely to come undone when we um, seam it later. And just do the same thing on the other side. So go ahead and go through the stitch, grab your yarn, pull it through, and just kind of tighten it a bit there. And there we go. So now it's less likely to come undone. So now there are a couple of options you could do. Either if you left a long enough tail, 
You could use that tail to then whip stitch the top of the shoulders together. Um, if you left it long enough to be able to slip stitch with this, you can do that as well. I tried doing that earlier just to see how far I could go, but because of how much yarn slip stitching takes up, this was definitely not long enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it the way I did on the sides. Just take my contrasting color here, since that's the color of the shoulders, and we're going to just uh, make a slip knot. And then finding that first stitch of the row of my first shoulder strap, I'm just going to insert my hook and then find that first stitch on the opposite side as well, right there. And then I just go ahead and grab my active yarn here, making sure it's the correct one, and then yarn over and slip stitch those together. And then what's nice is that because we did linen stitches, we can actually go ahead and just follow that same pattern here where we had, okay, well, I just worked into a single crochet. So the next one's going to be a, another single crochet here. So there's a single, oh. sorry, it looks like it got all loose on me. There we go. So single, Go into the next single on the opposite side. So I'm under both of those stitches and slip stitch those together. Then into this chain space, I'm going to go into my, my hook and then go into the chain space on the opposite side there and slip stitch those together. Then I just do that across. So I'll do single crochet, single crochet stitch here. I can get my hook through it. There we go. And into the single crochet stitch on the other side and then just slip stitch those together. Okay, and coming now to these last few stitches here. And we should end with two single crochets being joined together. There we go. All right, and then once I do that, I am ready to fasten off. I'm gonna find my scissors here, there we go. So we fasten off. Pull that loop through, just secure it. And now our shoulders have been seamed together. So then you just repeat that process on the opposite side. And then after that, we will be ready for the finishing touches, which is going to be working the trim around the arm openings and the neck. Okay, so once you're done seaming up your shoulder straps and the sides of your tank top, you are now ready to finish it up by doing some trim around the arm opening and the neck opening. Now the neck opening is going to basically work the exact same way as the sleeve opening. So I'm just going to show you how to do it here on the sleeve. And then after that, all the steps should be exactly the same. The only difference is going to be that you're going to join into the back of your neck. So if you flip it over here to this side, it's going to just be kind of just somewhere around here because you'll be working rounds continuously. So there's not going to really be a seam or anything when you work it. So um, to show you, we're gonna go ahead and and up to where I see the side here. So we can see where I fastened off. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tighten that up. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually work your trim in your contrasting, or sorry, your main color, because we want it to kind of pop against this contrasting color here. So I'm going to go ahead and join with slip stitch here. So I'll go ahead and just pick somewhere down here on the seam, kind of in there. We'll join with a single crochet. And then what you're going to do is just single crochet evenly around the edge. And it doesn't really matter exactly where you put the stitches as long as you're doing roughly one for every row. Just working single crochets 
evenly around. So as you go around, you're going to find that you will, you know, come to these seams. Whenever you get to these seams, you just can work like a single crochet into the seam or just kind of skip it all together. It's really just up to you. And at this point, the stitch count doesn't really matter. Just however many single crochets you make, that's how many you have. So go ahead and work yours up and I will show you what to do when you get around to the end. I'm coming now to where I'm almost done working these last stitches. As you can see, I'm just kind of randomly putting them in to just kind of fill in that space. And then once you do, you're then going to be ready to begin the next round. So what we're not going to do is we're not going to be joining and turning or anything like that. We're just going to be continuing working in the same direction as we've been before. But this time what we're going to do is we are going to be working back loop only slip stitches loosely around. So in this very first single crochet, we can find our front loop and our back loop. We're going to insert our hook into that back loop. There we go. Then we're going to just loosely slip stitch that together. And then I'm going to go into the next one and loosely slip stitch into that one. And then into the next one, loosely slip stitch into the back loop of that stitch. We're just going to keep doing that all the way around to the beginning. I'm just about to finish the second round of the slip stitches here. And there we go. And then we got one more to work here. All right. And then what you do is honestly, if you feel like you like the width of this trim and you just want to go ahead and finish it off, you can go ahead and finish it off by working a final slip stitch into the back loop here just to get rid of any jogging that might happen between um, the rounds that you've just done. Or if you want to, you can go ahead and work the third round that's instructed in the pattern by doing just one more round of, gent of loosely slip stitching through the back loop only of every slip stitch around. And by doing this, what it should do is create kind of a similar effect to the half double crochet third loop ridges we were doing earlier. It's not exactly going to look that same way because I didn't really want to do any like turning or really like heavy texture here or just on the trim. So I went ahead and just opted to do this by doing slip stitches. But in a moment here, I'll show you what I mean. So by working into the back loops, um, it's creating this kind of series of these loops that kind of look a little bit like the ridge. It's a little flatter, but it looks a little bit more like that ridge. We've got just a little bit more recessed into the stitches here. If you like the way that that looks, you can of course continue with this third round of slip stitches um, and then join with a final slip stitch at the end to get rid of the jogging the same way, or just opt to do the one round of slip stitches and then you're done. Then you'll go ahead and fasten off, weave in the ends, repeat that for the other armhole and for your neck opening. And then once you do that, you are actually ready to uh, begin wearing your Sunday tank top. Yeah.